Hi, welcome to Buff Zone. My name is Kyle Ringo. This is Ryan Thorburn. We cover the University of Colorado Athletic Department for the Daily Camera newspaper. Ryan, it's Tuesday. It's Washington State week. We'll get to the Cougars a little bit later in the week with another episode. I want to talk about John Embry had his press conference today. Uh, he was rehashing a little bit of the Ohio State game and really what he was talking about though is is the sort of psychological stuff he's he's had to get into with his team just trying to convince his own players on his own team that they're good enough to to play and compete at this level and I found it uh, startling it was it was refreshing the honesty we got from John Embry today but it was also uh, not really a big confidence booster in, in this team for the rest of the season. What were your impressions of John Embry today? Well, as a member of the media, it was a great press conference. He, John's very open, very honest, um, very harsh about his assessment of the guys. Um, he's not going to call anyone out by name. Obviously, these are college football players, not NFL players. But uh, it kind of reminded me of a Mike Singletary, the famous press conference where he said, I want winners. <laughs> I want winners. Can't win with these guys. Can't coach them. Can't do this. He basically said that there are players on this team who are not winners, who are satisfied being backup players, who are not getting it done on special teams. Um, they're going to throw a lot of starting players who he feels are good players back into the special teams mix. And basically he said if they only have 40 guys worthy of playing, they're going to play 40 guys no matter what the consequences are. So very interesting. Yeah, it, it was amazing to me that, I mean, here's a guy who uh, is actually contemplating taking only 55, 60 guys at most on the next road trip mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, some of the guys that he's allowing to, to get on the team playing are, are going on the road and, and not making plays and actually costing them, uh, you know, costing them games i think that happened at ohio state i'm not saying the buffs are going to win at ohio state but the big problem at ohio state was obviously special teams miscues and and a lot of those mistakes were made by guys who uh, like you said aren't starters and and we're getting their opportunity to prove themselves on special teams and, and they're not coming through with those plays and and so john has taken it uh He's made the decision to to severely trim back the roster and and uh, sort of cut out the fat and and go from there. And uh, it, it was interesting to me today that he, I mean he actually said at one point we don't have a lot we have some good players but we don't have a lot of them and mm -hmm. that that was a telling comment to me. And it, it, when you apply that when you when you take what he says there and look at what they have coming down the pike here uh, in terms of the schedule, it, it is not uh, an optimistic view for a Colorado football fan. I mean, you know, th this week you got Washington State coming to Folsom Field, and that might very well be the most winnable game remaining on the schedule. I hate the sports cliche changing the culture, which every new head coach says they have to change the culture. <laughs> I mean, but in this case, this is the changing the culture bowl. I mean, Paul Wolf at Washington State basically had to use 70 scholarship players his first three years, um, but you know, 15 below the 85 limit because he ran out a ton of guys that weren't getting it done academically or with their work work ethic or weren't talented enough to be scholarship players in the Pac-10. So after three brutal years, five wins, they think they're turning the corner, and this is a big game for them to win on the road against a team that's vulnerable like Colorado. And then at CU, you know, we went through spring drills were very physical. The fall camp looked good. Um, the attitude was we're going to will ourselves to run down your throat. But that change of culture has not taken place. Obviously, they have injuries on the offensive line. But I think John maybe is taken aback a little bit by how some players aren't accepting this new attitude and new way of doing things. Yeah, by the way, I think that is the first uh... – <laughs> first instance on buff zone history of using air quotes, but we'll, we'll go with it. Um, if I use changing the culture in my column, <laughs> I will, which I, will, I probably will. Tomorrow. I will absolutely do that. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. Uh, it, Ray Polk and Matt Barr came up and, and talked to the media after uh, John Embry, and they were actually there in the room listening to their coach talk. And, and so uh, we were able to ask them their thoughts on, on what their coach had to say about 
uh, the team and, and its mindset and its uh, psychological makeup. And I, I wouldn't ever expect a player to come in and just totally outright disagree with his head coach moments after hearing his head coach talk. But uh, as you would expect, both guys uh, said that they thought the way John Embry ap approached uh, the team this week was, uh, was pretty unusual. Embry actually called Luke Fickle, the Ohio State coach, uh, on Sunday, and in the course of their conversation, he got some of Luke Fickle's opinions about his players, about Colorado players, and asked Luke Fickle, obviously, if it'd be okay if he shared Fickle's opinions with his players, and he did that uh, in a Monday afternoon team meeting. And, and uh, you know, Matt Barr said it was it was an eye-opening experience for guys to hear from the opposing coach what what that coaching staff thought of them in terms of a scouting report before the game, after the game, and and uh, so that was another element that was just fascinating uh, from John Embry this week. Yeah, and Matt Barr, to his credit, he said my scouting report from Ohio State, as told to me, was. <laughs> doesn't run good routes, we'll drop the ball. And, uh, you know, but it's not just, this psychology isn't just about college athletes. John referenced that, you know, Tony Gonzalez, a future Hall of Fame tight end, you know, he had to do a lot of psycho psychological stuff with him to get him through a 16 game grind. Um, Mercedes Lewis at UCLA didn't think he was a good player. He's turned into a Pro Bowl player in the NFL. So, you know, a lot of guys in CU's program have the talent I'm not saying they're like those guys, but they have talent and they need to mentally believe that they belong at this level. Yeah, I guess if you're John Embry, you're searching for ways to get your guys to believe and and this is uh, you know his first first step toward doing that. It, it'll be interesting to see uh, how it all plays out if it has an effect on the way the team performs. Obviously, uh, you know we probably won't exactly find out this week just because uh, the Buffs are a different team in Folsom Field, as we've, you know, come become painfully aware over the past, what, four years now. Another interesting thing from Embry today, I think, was the first actual public acknowledgement uh, from uh, a coach or whatever in the program that that this team is definitely has something different about it on the road uh, versus when it plays at home. It, you want to answer that? Let me get that. I like that this you might have the, be uh, Luke Fickle. I like that you have the Metallica ringtone. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, he had, Embry had the first public acknowledgement that, that the Buffs are a different team when they go on the road. And obviously this week isn't a, a, a road game, but it was interesting to me that a, a coach is willing, willing to come out and say that, hey, my team gets on a plane and it's, it's a totally different team. So John Embry is definitely managing a lot of... Uh, a psychosis or whatever in his program right now and probably more than he probably envisioned himself having to deal with uh, four games into his first season. Yeah, I think that can wait till next week when they go to Stanford, that whole thing. I think John Embry, you know, laughingly referred to himself as Dr. Fraser Crane this week. So <laughs> I think the key issue for him this week is they're going to use the guys who are into it, the practice well, that believe and try and beat Washington State. And if they can get to 1-0 and in the Pac-12, that's a pretty good start mentally. All right, we'll come back a little later in the week and we'll talk more about the Cougars and maybe uh, Ryan will have some more Metallica for you.